Our next speaker is Kenji Maillard, and he will talk about reasonably gradual dependent type theory. Thank, well, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> so this is joint work with uh, Maven, Lennon Bertrand, Nicolas Tabarro, and Eric Tanter. We are all in this room, so if you have questions about this work, you can just ask them uh, at any point later. So we have heard a lot about dependent types in, uh, in these sessions but maybe less about gradual types and even less about gradual dependent types. So let me give you an example of what gradual dependent types could be useful for. So here I have an example of length indexed list, uh, namely vectors, and uh, I have two constructors to build such a length indexed list, either nil, which builds a list of size zero, and a cons constructor that adds one element to a list of size n to give me a list of size successor of n. On such length inductive list, uh, length indexed list, I might want to define functions. For example, a filter function that will take me a list of some length to a new list and filter out all the elements that do not satisfy some Boolean predicate p. However, when I want to specify such a function, I do not know uh, what is the length of the resulting list just from the uh, type of the list. <coughs> I need to inspect the content of the list to, to know what will be the length of the result. So at first sight, I might say, OK, I'm not sure yet how I will specify this thing. Let's leave some hole. Well, gradual dependent types allow you to formalize, in some sense, this possibility, the fact that you will leave some holes which are unknown in your programs, by adding to the type theory an actual type which is unknown, which is this question mark, and to define a program. So let's define the fil this filter function. Well, we'll go by cases. On the nil case, we'll just return nil. And when we have a successor case, when the list is of a size of a successor, it has a head and a tail, we'll check whether the head satisfies the predicate or not and uh, uh, proceed depending on the two cases. Here we see that in the last branch, I return a list which is of size uh, successor. So my type checker will check that I have a vector of si containing elements of type A of size successor of some unknown element. And I need to return something which is vector of A and some unknown element. What a gradual uh, proof assistant would do on such a case is to actually check that these two types are not convertible, but consistent, meaning that we can optimistically consider that unknown and successor of unknown are um, the same in some sense. And uh, at runtime, we will actually check that we can uh, do, like insert, cast that will check that the invariant that we want to ensure on these uh, functions are preserved. So how do we get this kind of gradual dependent types? Well, we have been working for already two years on trying to develop uh, a whole framework of uh, gradual uh, dependent types. And our approach is to have two languages at some level, an actual gradual CIC which is the source language in which you will write your programs, and uh, another uh, calculus, which is called the CAST uh, CIC, which will be closer to an actual type theory as we are used to, to work with, but it will come with a few effectful primitives. It will have some unknown terms and types in the CAST calculus. It will have CAST operators that allow to map any term of type A to a term of type B, and it will have errors. So for this talk, I will concentrate on the cast calculus. If you want to know more about the gradual part, elaboration, and how it relates, everything relates, go see the PhD defense of Maven tomorrow. So uh, how do we specify this cast? Well, there is, in the literature on gradual types, a notion of precision that allows to go from static types, types which are in the underlying base type theory, in our case, the calculus of inductive construction, to the unknown type. And the idea is that we are losing precision as we go towards unknown. 
So unknown is supposed to be maximal for this order. And uh, uh, the specification, like precision, ensures that casts are valid in the sense that if I have a type A which is more precise than a type B, then I can embed through a cast operation elements of A into B, and uh, the cast in the other direction will be a projection. And both of these functions will be some kind of uh, Galois connection. So now if we look at this um, setting of a gradual uh, dependent type theory, I told you that we had this unknown uh, type, which is an element of some universe that I write square. S assuming that I'm conservative over CIC and I have the gradual properties that I was showing you in the previous slide, well, I can derive that I have also unknown to unknown, which is an element of my universe. Unknown is maximal for precision, so unknown to unknown is less precise than unknown. And by gradual properties, I will get an embedding and projection pair from the function space to unknown. And this might recall you something from your untyped lambda calculus class, because from this, I can actually define omega like a divergent term. And this is what we call the fire triangle of graduality, which states that I cannot have at the same time the gradual guarantees, the embedding of CIC, and normalization like having the three of them together makes things explode, boom. So what can we do about that? Well, we can actually try to get the best uh, of like at least two of the three sides of this triangle. And that's what we did in previous work, like first restricting the function types and getting this uh, version which is called GIC shift, having a version which is not normalizing, uh, which is on the bottom uh, left corner, right corner. And uh, on the left, I have a version which embeds CIC, which has normalization, but which is not gradual, which does not respect uh, the gradual properties such uh, that I was showing you. Uh, what I would like to talk more about this talk is how can we go further than just stating, okay, we have this language uh, of which is normalizing conservative of CIC, it has some cast operation. We can check on some examples that some things are working with respect to this cast, but in general, we don't know how to globally characterize the gradual properties. And what can we do about going further than that? Just saying, okay, we don't really know what we can say about cast. Well, let's internalize uh, the precision. So precision was some external notion. We will internalize it in the type theory like adding, uh, if I can, adding a type of precision in the theory that allows me to reason about the um, types which are in a relation of precision. When I do that, so I'm adding actually two versions of precision, one for types at some universal i, and one for terms uh, between two types, so an heterogeneous uh, precision relation. And I, I'm adding this things as proposition in a type P of, which is a pure universe of proposition. I'm saying pure here because I will not have errors or cast or unknown in my universe of, pro of proposition. And uh, for technical purpose, I will also assume that it is definitionally proof irrelevant. So it also means that I can just throw in any constructors I want. I don't need to care too much about how these different things compute. And uh, so how will we use this kind of uh, precision uh, proposition? Well, let's see on an example. Here I have two functions. One function, which is just the successor that's taking an integer and returning the next integer. And another function that's taking an unknown term and uh, uh, casting it to a natural number and then adding one. I'm claiming that these two functions are in precision relation. And we can do that by basically using the definition of precision, which is kind of parametricity flavored. Uh, and then in order to work on the body, I will use other properties which are reminiscent of the Galois connection property, meaning that if I have two terms which are related heterogeneously, then uh, the downcast 
of uh, term of the right will be related to the term A. So we have various reasoning principles to build such uh, precision relation. Some transitivity, quasi-reflexivity, the adjunction properties such uh, as a rule above, and some decomposition uh, properties. The important point is that we don't want to have this counterexample of omega in this language. So in particular, we cannot have the fact that unknown to unknown is uh, uh, less precise than unknown. This means that we cannot have unknown being maximal everywhere. In particular, we'll have a different version. Unknown will be maximal with respect to reflexive elements at a, some universe, but not for the precision on the universe generally. It also means that uh, unknown to unknown as an element of uh, type P, if we fix a level, will not be reflexive. So that's why I was saying that I had a quasi-reflexive relation and not a reflexive one. And uh, last, we can still recover something um, on unknown to unknown, because even if it's not below unknown at the same universe level, by raising the universe level, we can embed it in the next unknown. So, um, well, I have something about explaining what's good about uh, GRIF, this uh, theory which internalizes uh, precision. It's consistent. We build a model based on partial preorders to show that. It normalizes. We need to study a bit more of the model and show that, uh, it preserve redu uh, that the model preserves reduction sequences. And we can characterize some fragment, like we can recognize some fragment of gradual terms, terms that are reflexive for the precision relation. So to summarize, I presented some or work on par uh, a partially gradual type theory, which internalized precision in order to reason about what is gradual in this language. There are more details uh, in the paper, which is online and has been conditionally accepted at ICFP. There is a proof of concept for GRIP in AGDA. You can program uh, in AGDA. It's developed with uh, rewriting rules. And finally, I have a partial preorder based model in COC that formalizes this intuition. And there is further work to go to a gradual proof assistant, but I think I will stop there and uh, leave it for questions. Sorry, can you go to the first example with the vectors? Yep. If I'm on the right, yep. Yeah, we are. Right, so the naive approach that I m would maybe go for is to define the output type like as a sigma to say that there exists a natural number such that we have a vector of that length. What's the, um, the advantage of uh, gradual typing compared to this more naive approach? Uh, no, I think, I think gradual typing is a naive approach. Okay. Like it's a most naive approach in the sense that you don't need to know like about this encoding of saying, oh, I will keep around the length and stuff like that. You are just putting a question mark. You're saying, let's try to see what happens, how I will de <coughs> develop my program. And then I can try maybe to evaluate some, like once I have this thing, even if, if it is not fully specified, it might raise some error because I made a mistake somewhere. I can already start, uh, start running it. I can do, I don't know, run quick check on it to see if it can find some kind of counter example or something. So at some level, it's the most naive approach. It's okay. something that you will use, for example, for prototyping. You might use it, for example, when you want to refactor something and you don't really know how it will go later on. You just want locally to have some kind of flexibility that will allow you to advance. Okay, so the advantage is more on the ergonomics of like yeah. developing. Okay, thank you. Ultimately, you hope that you will be able to have everything static. Other questions? Is, is the question mark part of this grip theory or what? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. So, didn't have much time to present 
the actual content of grip, but grip is, is cast CIC, so it contains question mark yeah. and, mm -hmm. and cast and errors. And Uh, so can you go back to your uh, your filter example? Uh, <laughs> so you, I I just heard you say in the end you want to be everything static, which means that in the end you want to have a, a something for that question mark, or not? Like I mean, <laughs> in the end, in a formal development, yeah, you will want I think to have everything static. So yeah, yeah. at some point you will look at this function, say okay, I'm not satisfied anymore but with this interface. I want to have stronger guarantees. Uh -huh. Let's tackle seriously the problem of specifying it. But there will not be a concrete value for for question mark in the end, right? Or like not a concrete integer. No. <laughs> but either either you will actually go to the packed approach, saying okay, I'll take a, a natural number, mm -hmm. or you will have a um, another function which will define what the actual length that you need to do here. Uh, or you will realize that actually doing this kind of filter function on index list might not be the right approach, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> which is probably what I would do. But yeah. at least, you know, when you ju are just starting, you don't really know. Yeah. You try to do something, you see how it happens. Okay, thanks. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.